Okay. Hello and welcome to Real Wife Convos. Um, we are so elated to speak to the CEO of Windstar Motors. And I told you guys about the press release before he came along. Uh, Mr. Long, tell us, how are you feeling today, first of all? Let me just address how you're feeling. I'm feeling great. That's good. Really happy to be here and thank you for having me. Yes, yes. Thank you for taking the time. Um, you have some amazing partners. You know, Mr. James Kenner is fantastic. Yes. But guess what? Mm. Mr. Ronald Long is fantastic too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm curious, how do you and your business partners meet? Well, John Scanlon and I met doing a transaction for uh, it was it was a real estate transaction very large transaction i was an underwriter at the time and uh, he brought the package in and we met and over time we became uh, just not just partners in business but very good friends over 21 years wow you know um, a lot of young people now, they go to college and they meet people and some are introverts. Um, mm -hmm. How important do you think it is for, you know, a person growing out of their teens and into their early 20s to form relationships with people, everyone that they meet in business or at school, you know, how important is it for them to uh, form relationships with each other? Oh, yeah. Well, the key is um, even my second other co-founder, James Gennard, the key is you find people who you have the same similar interests, yes. the drive, the dedication. I met James at his uh, salon in Beverly Hills, and um, it was another transaction. But one of his associates introduced me to him. And once again, over the past 23 years, he's been just arm in arm in terms of the great partnership. Wow, that's amazing. Cause you don't find too many people that you just mesh with, you know, you have the same goals and people who are able to put in the time and the work and the blood, sweat and tears, as they say, like no matter how long it takes us, we are going to accomplish this mission, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, well, the, the thing is a dedication that you put into anything, I don't care if it's school, family, uh, recreation, creativity that you wanna do, you've gotta give it all your all. If you give up and stop, you'll never know yep. if you could have been successful. You'll never know. So why don't you give the audience a little more details about this air car? Like, I am so impressed with the whole air car. Like, who would have thought? I wouldn't have. <laughs> well, it's been 14 years of blood, sweat, and tears to bring it to the American people. And, you know, we had to you know, raise money. We had to figure out how we we're going to build. And times have changed so much now in terms of uh, manufacturing. You've got the 3D printing. You've got a lot of uh, parts that we won't be using as a regular vehicle. Um, the main thing is the to, to save money for our government, our cities, our state, our counties, our military. Once they convert from fossil fuels and choose a green vehicle, uh, the cost is dramatically different, at least in our case. And wow. that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take this product to your kitchen table, to your pocketbook, because if we reduce the deficit, reduce budgets for county, states, and cities, it reflects right back into the community. Why? Right. It sounds like you might have the answer to them slash not slashing social security. Yeah, well, didn't <laughs> touch that. <laughs> Can't touch that. They, there's talks of it. You know, they're like, where are we going to find these budget cuts from? And if they touch that, our children and their children won't have begin anything by that time, right? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. The money back because sooner or later our children are going to pay their children are going to pay 
But now is the time to clean our air and to put the money back into the government so that they don't have to stay in the soup lines or not be able to buy a house or go on vacation or have a retirement or, or just go to dinner. Right, or just go to dinner. These days, it's between go to dinner or buy gas. Everything yeah. used to be, I remember when I was a young mom, it was like, okay, do I get gas to get to work or do I go buy the baby these new shoes that he needs to walk? You know, we got to get to work. I mean, I gas is a big deal, especially for government authorities, like you mentioned, the Postal Service and the military, because yes. I imagine they spend crazy money in fuel like daily and it's not an option. This is like a necessity, like electricity, you know? Yes. Yes. Well, the, like I said, the thing is, Windstar Motors, the plan is to open up facilities across the nation, going into the poorest communities. We do plan to go into Compton, that's where I'm from, ah. and to the facility in Compton, but not just Compton, Detroit, Atlanta, Houston. We're going to go into these communities and train and hire people based on us training them. So if you don't have a high school degree okay, or diploma, that doesn't mean you can't learn. Yeah. And we definitely welcome you. If you're incarcerated and you got out of jail, we welcome you. Everybody needs a seat at the table to make a decent living for their family. And that's our plan. That's amazing because these this is what we're missing. You know, when people come up with all these things we should do, um, send the kids back to school. What's the plan? I don't know. You know, a lot of people want to know what is the plan. And that's why people are upset because they're not getting answers. But it yes. seems like you not only have the answers, you're giving out hope, you're giving mm -hmm. out jobs, you're yeah. clearing the air for the economy. And you're saving the economy so many millions of dollars on fuel. So that's like a fourfold benefit. And I'm sure I left out some. Well, the, the key is, and, and I, I hate to, to do this when it comes to women and men. Okay. Uh -huh. Hiring people. Lightly now, tread lightly. Work. Huh? Tread lightly, you said when it comes to women and men. No, but what I'm saying is okay. the women that come to work for us will be paid the same. They'll get the same identical pay for the same identical job. Wow. If there's an opening in the company, they'll get promoted in the company. And to go to school, we will help them as they're going to school. We want, like I said, to equalize things. Women have struggled. I mean, I grew up when you couldn't rent a house. A woman couldn't rent a house, couldn't get a credit card unless her husband signed or you, you couldn't get a job because they didn't hire women for that job. Right. And that used to be across the board with, with the races. It wasn't a black or white thing. It was a woman thing at one yes. point, even yes. when, when it came to voting. Yeah. I, I, I grew up with really seven women. That. I didn't really realize that women had so many problems back in the day because of being female. Good See, vote. Back in our history, and a lot of the television shows now are showing that. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, it was it was rough. Like I said, I, I grew up in, in Compton, uh, born in Biloxi, Mississippi. Really? But the key, yeah, I was born in Biloxi. Okay. And the, the key is, I don't care where you're from. I don't care. As long as you have the drive, as long as you believe in yourself, and as long as you, you, you do that, you will succeed. There is no reason for any of us not to succeed. Right. But you have to have that drive. Yeah. You have to have community. You got to have relationships. You, you have to come to the table and say, I'm going to make this work. Right. No and that's what, what we've done. No yeah. matter what. That's um, what we've done. So let me ask you, if you had a choice of whose desk this could land on first, out of um, the different areas you're targeting, um, what order would you put it in? Like, would you like it to pick up at the postal service first? Or like, which, which avenue would you like to see? 
Well, I'm going to go with individuals. Individuals? Yeah, Jay, uh, uh, I, I'm thinking of uh, Basil. Okay. Jeff, and the reason why I'm, I'm thinking of him is because of his business model. Okay. I mean, he took used books into trillions. So, yeah. you know, you can't, you have to look at who's out here putting it together and who's out here trying to put it together. Yes. I would love to get his input uh, as to our plan. Okay. Uh, Oprah. Okay. Definitely. Uh, Oprah, you know, started out as a commentator on the news in yeah. Chicago, I believe. And she built an empire. She did. Uh, I would like to get her input, like to do an interview with her. Yes. What she thinks about the economy. I'd like to interview her. So, you know, uh, that was it. Now, the last one might blow you a little bit is okay. Beyonce. Really? Beyonce. Yeah. No, she's a businesswoman. There you go. Okay. She is not only is she an entertainer, <laughs> the girl knows how to work it. Yes. And I just admire her and look up to her for her business ethics. Yes, she is so. about business. I mean, even family, music, and so many people, as I told someone recently, in the entertainment business, a business-minded person wins first because they understand why you have to have humility, why sometimes you gotta just keep your mouth closed till you keep getting to next levels, till you keep climbing and climbing to the top. Yeah. Um, who is that? It was um, Mark Wahlberg. They said, why do you have so many stairs in your house? And he said, because he believes that in order to get to the top, you gotta keep climbing up. So mm -hmm. this thing was in his home <laughs> to put a bunch of stairs. And I'm like, okay, let's see if he say that when he about 65. <laughs> <laughs> Need an elevator. <laughs> right, right. Like you ain't want to be climbing up. Let's just ride up. Yeah. But no, that's, that's, that's awesome because what it does take is a group of people and a nod from these people like Miss Oprah Winfrey, people like um, Beyonce, you know, just nods from women of power and men in control so that they can have that sphere of influence of others. And with everybody on board, you know, you won't lose. You, you're not gonna lose with this project because it, it's a no brainer, you know, especially because of the reasons that you're doing it, because of the love that it was created with, it wasn't yes. created with like a greed type of motion. The whole motives of everything is community, providing mm -hmm. jobs, equal pay, like everything you said is what people have been looking for. So you just got the whole game, the Monopoly game, and all you need are the players on board. That's what go. it sounds like to me. Yeah, and that, you know what? I'm so grateful for you. Uh, I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, I can't, wait for us to do updates right i know i want to see you guys the numbers from the press release so you can see how many people and how many impressions is actually gotten so i'm going to get that to you because okay. those numbers were elevating um it was getting all over the place people were asking me if you guys were a publicly traded company like, mm -hmm. so, cause these guys want to buy stock. Like they're like, <laughs> what's going on? And I'm like, I'll get you the answer later, you know, for a fee. No, I'm just playing. We'll, we'll be the first minority owned manufacturer in the US. The first. The first. I, I think I'm the first CEO of a man. I'm not sure. I think well, there was another gentleman yeah. in the sixties. Yeah. I love everything about it. Um, let's see, we talked about aligning yourself with like-minded people. You covered all everything before I even got to it. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, the last thing I wanted to ask you, I remember if you were able to have a conversation with your younger self, mm -hmm. knowing what you now understand about how to navigate through business. Because sometimes, you know, 18, we think we understand and we really don't have a clue, you know? What at three pieces of advice would you have for yourself? Well, I came from a single mom with three siblings, three, three sisters. Uh-oh. And my mom just was harping on education. Really? 
and I didn't quite get it. I mean, I got it, but I didn't quite get it. So if I had to talk to my younger self, more and more and more education. Yeah, you can't get too much. Sure. Uh, my younger self, humility. My younger self, uh, love the people that support you and help you more than you can ever dream that you're doing now. Because every moment that someone's helping you in your tasks, your daily tasks, loving you, being with you, you know, praying to God with you, cherish that. Yes. Do not take that for granted. Uh, younger self, the last thing is believe in you, love you, and keep God first. Yep, and keep God first. That's the number. If you keep God first, all of those other things will fall in line. Oh, you know? yeah. That's one thing we cannot. Now, I'm going to remind you of this. When you up there on a billionaire Forbes list, and you forget about all the little people, like, remember what you said about your younger self? <laughs> when they won't let me in the door, I'm going to be like, no, no. My Never son. happened. Never happened. <laughs> Yes. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to be diligent in getting this to pronto copy of the interview and right. so we can get it out to more people and I can tag all those people you mentioned. I'm going to be tagging them on this video because right. you never know the power of social media. Whew. Yeah, we're going to knock those budgets down. Yeah. 20, yeah. $20 trillion dollars. Let's knock five or 10 off of that. Right. Let's knock it off of that, right? Bring it back. Yeah. Yes, bring it back. Thank you so much, Ron. <laughs> Thank I appreciate you, you um, taking the time Thank you. again. And you have a wonderful evening. You too. All and right. God bless. Take care.